the Earth might be on the verge of a huge change. Scientists have discovered that every 200 million years, comets start raining down on our planet. This comet shower changes how the Earth looks, reshapes the continents, and increases geological activity everywhere. We are in the 20th cycle, which means new transformations are coming soon. Why does Earth have active plate tectonics and continents, unlike any other planet? To learn the truth, geologists decided to check out zircon crystals. We often find these tiny crystals in rock. They're very tough and can survive crazy geological processes that could destroy most other minerals. But they're cool because we can use them to learn how old their rocks are. These crystals have some uranium in them, and it decays into lead over time. By measuring how much uranium decayed in a crystal and how much is left, you can figure out the age of a mineral. So, we can use this trick to learn a lot about the Earth's crust and history. Recently, geologists checked out zircon crystals from two of the Earth's oldest continents and regions, the North American Craton in Greenland and the Pilbara Craton in Western Australia. It turned out that rocks from these continents could tell us what happened to our planet during the Archean Eon, from 2.8 to 3.8 billion years ago. It was a crazy era for our planet, back when magma, rich in elements we've never seen before, pierced the surface and broke out for the first time. This event changed what the land looked like forever. And when scientists studied them, they noticed something else. It looks like there's a cycle where every 200 million years, the Earth starts forming new continental crust for some reason. When they explored this further, they suddenly realized that this might be because of our galaxy. Our solar system is located in the Milky Way galaxy, right here in the Orion Arm. An arm is a place that has tons of stars, gas, and dust. There are many of them in the Milky Way, bigger and smaller ones, and they extend and wind outward, making galaxies look like spirals. We're located in a minor arm, about 27,000 light years away from the heart of the Milky Way, a horrifying black hole called Sagittarius A star. But our solar system doesn't just stay in one place. It moves at a breakneck speed of 150 miles per second. That's like crossing the Earth 22 times in an hour. Just like planets move around the Sun, the solar system rotates around the center of our galaxy. This orbital period is called one galactic year. Objects that are closer to Sagittarius A star move faster. You know, your typical inner lane advantage. But large arms, the ones that are further away from us, are much slower. They move at a speed of about 130 miles per second. That's just some 19 runs around the equator in an hour. Because of this difference, the solar system moves kinda in and out of the galaxy's spiral arms. This is like when fans make a wave in a stadium. This leaves a mark on both the solar system and our planet. There is a vast, distant region around our solar system called the Oort Cloud. It's about 4.6 trillion miles away from the Sun, like traveling to the Sun and back 50,000 times. Now, the Oort Cloud is filled with comets. You might not know this, but they're way more dangerous to us than regular asteroids. Asteroids come in different sizes and are usually just rocks with some metals. They don't have a glowing gas around them. They just vibe around the Sun in their main asteroid belt, somewhere between Mars and Jupiter. And if the almighty Jupiter with its crazy gravity doesn't stop them, sometimes they come down on us, causing some havoc here and there. But a comet is a small object made mostly of ice and rock. When it gets close to the sun, it heats up and releases dust and gas. This forms a glowing cloud around it called a coma. This is what we see as a tail as the comet moves and their consequences are much more extreme. When we complete one galactic year, the icy objects from the Oort cloud are pushed towards all our planets. And when we enter the big spiral arms of our galaxy, the rainstorm begins. Comets are much faster than asteroids. When they hit Earth, they leave huge impacts and leave giant craters. 
The energy from these impacts can melt huge parts of Earth's crust and mantle. The molten rock then rises to the surface, floating there. As it cools, it solidifies and forms a new crust. Over time, these small pieces of crust can merge and grow larger as more solidified magma attaches to them. Eventually, all this forms big continents. So, once in a galactic year, when comets start hitting Earth more often, they really change the Earth's structure and help create new land masses. Another proof of this is spherule beds. This is what we call tiny, round particles created by material thrown out during impacts. When we look at them, they also match the cycle timing. Spherule beds on our planets formed exactly when the Earth was crossing the Milky Way's spiral arms, and most of them formed when it was just over 1 billion years old. There are many cycles that influence our planet. For example, the Milankovic cycles, the ones that tell us how the Earth's orbit and tilt change over time. This affects the planet's climate, but this new 200 million year cycle is a whole new level. We used to believe that continents only formed because of things that happen deep within our planet. And, well, maybe asteroids influence it a little. But now it seems like the continents were born and shaped thanks to the Milky Way itself. Scientists now want to study these ancient deposits to see if it's actually true. If it is, it could mean that we're getting closer to some huge geological activity. The continents might start reshaping again or even coming together to form a new supercontinent. The continents on our planet look like puzzle pieces that fit very well, like South America and Africa. And that's not a coincidence. Many years ago, they formed one supercontinent called Pangaea. Pangaea used to be a landmass full of unique creatures, like the giraffe-necked Tanistrophius, the toothless Lystrosaurus, and the reptile bird Drepanosaurus. But the ground beneath us is always moving, floating on magma like vegetables flowing on a super-hot soup. And eventually, Pangaea broke apart. However, it wasn't the only supercontinent in our history. This coming together and then breaking apart happens pretty regularly, like with some toxic people. Usually it happens every 200 to 600 million years. So yes, all our current continents will come together again one day. We call it Pangaea Proxima, Pangaea Ultima, or simply Amazia. It could form during the next galactic year. There are many theories about how it might happen. Africa might merge with Europe, and Australia might move north towards Asia. Life on Pangaea 2.0 would be challenging. People would likely have dark skin, hair, and eyes. We would all hang out near the equator and along the coasts because the weather would be nicer and calmer there. The center would be horrifying, hot and dry, filled with deserts. There would be a common language and shared traditions. In general, such an event would really bring us closer together. No pun intended. However, it would also mean that if someone starts fighting, we're all screwed. Also, all the potential health issues might influence everyone on the continent. And let's pray that there won't be any large asteroids this time, or we're definitely doomed. This, of course, the movement of the Earth's crust will lead to a lot of cataclysms. But maybe humans won't even live on Earth by that time. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.